Okay, this is probably the last segment for this lecture on worksheet seven or worksheet six, number seven. I'm finishing off the list of organelles, and the last video ended with the smooth ER. We talked about it's the site of making certain lipids, detoxifying drugs, storing calcium, a few other functions, but that's enough for now. And I suggested that you take a look at a couple of videos, and I got the I have the links for those. So here are the links, and I sent you an email. So you should get this in a Word file so that you can just click on it without having to copy it down. Uh, carefully. So just click on it from the, within the email and it should take you to the two links. I think they're at an appropriate level for what we're doing. If there are things mentioned in there that are not mentioned in the course, you can probably figure those are low priority. But hopefully this stirs up some questions and uh, bring those questions to class. So let's uh, continue on with lysosomes. So lysosomes are another organelle inside the cell. There are lots of pictures. They're usually drawn something like this. These are little tiny vesicles inside the cell. Again, plasma membrane going around them. So these are lysosomes. And the root here, geez, let's get a picture where you can see these are the lysosomes, and they are inside the cell. And lysosomes, some mean or soma is body. So these are little tiny bodies inside the cell, and lice means to split. Hydrolysis or hydrolysis is splitting with water. By the way, while we're talking about this, oftentimes uh, the O is used as a connector between two words. Here it's lice and some or lysosomes. You see the O also in cardiovascular, for example, linking the cardiac system with the vascular system. So that's uh, sometimes what the O means there. Back to the lysosomes. They're little bodies within the cell and they have digestive enzymes in them. And these are very powerful enzymes that will break down proteins and other cellular structures so they're contained within this membrane so they don't wander around willy-nilly out here in the cytosol grinding up and destroying proteins. So they're not there, they're contained within the lysosome. So these are, uh, let's call them hydrolytic because they're involved with hydrolysis or splitting hydrolytic enzymes. Or simply digestive enzymes. Now this is for intracellular digestion. It's not for extracellular like in the intestine. This is digestion that will occur within the cell. So these are not involved with digesting lunch or dinner in your intestines. These are involved with digesting other proteins inside the cell. So this is all intracellular. And they're made from the Golgi. So again, if we back up here, put the nucleus in. You remember how we had these different organelles. We had a ER system, something like this. So that was our ER. And as proteins are made, they move through the ER and then they butt off. 
This shows up in some of those videos. And then those go to the Golgi. So this is the Golgi. And those proteins that were made, I need another color here. Let's go back to green. The little proteins, let me zoom in. The proteins that have been made in the ER, they're in these vesicles that are moving to the Golgi. So there are the little dots inside. Those are the hydrolytic enzymes. They move through the Golgi and then that buds off. Don't get hung up on the colors here. But there's the green digestive enzymes. And now we have these green hydrolytic enzymes that are proteins inside the cell in a little piece of membrane. So remember that hydrolytic enzymes are proteins. And we made them. Okay, so these are the lysosomes. I apologize for this uh, video. I'm not paying attention to the mag. So backing up, here is the ER making the proteins. They move through vesicles of the ER, bud off. They move to the Golgi. And those proteins move through the Golgi. And ultimately, so maybe the proteins are here in the Golgi as they're moving through this system. They get to this to the end of the Golgi and a little bit of it pinches off and now we have a lysosome inside the cell that contains those proteins, those digestive enzymes. Okay, so big deal. Let's keep going with the picture. And redraw our cell and we won't worry about the nucleus and the ER and the Golgi. We'll just take a look at some of these lysosomes with their digestive enzymes in them and what they do. Okay, so again those are the lysosomes. Now certain cells, like in the immune system, if this were a white blood cell, for example, and lots of other cells also, they will engulf uh, different materials from the outside, such as bacteria. And I should have drawn this in pencil. So real quick, I'm gonna redraw this cell because I wanna do an animation here. So I'm redrawing this thing. Here is the cell again. And I'll redraw the lysosomes. So those are the lysosomes. Okay. Here comes the bad bacteria. So here are bacteria. Now this cell can destroy the bacteria. Let's pretend that this is a white blood cell. So for example, a WBC, which is a white blood cell. Okay, white blood cells, part of your immune system, have to destroy the bacteria. So what they do is they move up close to the bacteria, which, let's pretend they're close, and I take my eraser, and I'm just going to do the, show the process of endocytosis. So the cell membrane then folds in on itself, sort of engulfing these bacteria. And then we have the bacteria here. And then the cell engulfs that completely. 
and the membrane comes back here and now we have that and now we have this is sometimes referred to as a phagosome don't worry about that it's not on your list I won't ask you about it now but you'll encounter it later so that's the phagosome we phagocytosed or we ate the bacteria or rather the cell did okay so just to finish off this story let's get the digestive let's get the bacteria digested rather so here again is our cell and inside it we have the let's do this in pencil we have the lysosome with the digestive enzymes in it so again this is the lysosome and here is our phagosome with bacteria so w slash with bacteria and what was in the lysosome so the lysosome is with digestive enzymes which are proteins and we need to kill the bacteria so these two just fuse so they come together and this is animation again a little bit later in time here is the lysosome and here is the phagosome and they merge together so again here are the digestive enzymes and here are the bacteria and this is sometimes those two vesicles fuse and this is guess what referred to as a phagolysosome again there's the connector the FO a phagolysosome and what happens is that the little digestive enzymes move over here and they chop up the bacteria and they kill them and then we have a lot of debris we have ground up killed bacteria so you need to get rid of those out of the cell and guess how you move things out of the cell exocytosis and I don't have an eraser for the membrane but that's exocytosis. I think we'll talk about exocytosis some more. So that's the nitty gritty basic story of the lysosomes. Let me show you a better illustration of what I was trying to do. This is out of a different textbook. Check it out, it should start looking familiar. Nucleus, rough ER, little ribosomes along it. And there's a little, uh, zoom in here. Here are little ribosomes and proteins that are being made, the little green dots. And they move through the rough ER, they get modified, and they wind up being butted off here into a vesicle, a membrane bound vesicle. That vesicle then moves over to the Golgi, merges with the Golgi, and then the proteins work their way through the Golgi. And then they bud off and they either are exocytosed over here out of the cell, depending on what the proteins are. Maybe they're antibodies that need to get into the blood. They need to get out of the cell. So they could go that route. Or perhaps these are digestive proteins that we've been making. And they are budded off and put into these little vesicles. Here are the lysosomes. 
So we have those in the cell. And then here are the bacteria that are endocytosed, which is what I tried to draw on the paper. And that endocytotic vesicle, or that phagosome, merges with the lysosomes. And then we have the phagolysosome, and we digest the bacteria, the bad guys. So perhaps that illustration out of a different book helps. And please develop questions and bring them to class. And that's enough for the lysosome. The next organelle in our list, we're nearing the bottom, are the mitochondria. talk about the mitochondria rather extensively with cellular respiration when we're making ATP. But for right now, remember that it is a uh, organelle with two membranes. So it, like the nucleus, has a double membrane. And this is the site of ATP production, ATP synthesis. We haven't talked about ATP, but it's simply a high energy molecule. It carries energy. Just like a little teaspoon of gasoline in your car carries a lot of energy, ATP carries enough energy to, get, to power the cell. Some people call the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell. I think that's a little hokey. It doesn't really tell you very much about what it does. It makes ATP. It looks something like this. Here is the cell. I'm not going to draw the nucleus, ER, or any of the rest of it. And I will draw a rather large mitochondria, just for the sake of illustration. There's the outer membrane, and then the inner membrane is folded up. So that's a mitochondria. Our mitochondrion. And Singular, mitochondria, plural. Makes ATP. And we will talk about mitochondria a good deal later. Okay? We mentioned in the endosymbiotic theory that these have their own genome. So just to review, have own genome, which just means that it has its own genes. Uh, or maybe has own genome. Has own genome, makes own proteins, makes some of its proteins, uh, similar to bacteria. Pretty soon you can kind of forget about that endosymbiotic theory because we're not going to be talking about it anymore. The main thing about mitochondria is that they make ATP. If you have oxygen available, you need to have the oxygen available in the mitochondria to make the ATP. And the ATP that gets made stays inside the cell. You don't have ATP flowing through your blood. The ATP stays inside the cells to power all this machinery inside the cell. And the last organelle is the cytoskeleton. Cyto, cyte for cell. And skeleton is pretty straightforward. 
Um, that's the internal structure of the cell. And again, we're connecting cytoskeleton with the O connector. So, this is inside the cell. And if this is our cell, there are all kinds of protein fibers. All of the cytoskeleton is protein. You don't have calcified bones or anything like that, of course, inside cells. And there are all kinds of protein fibers that run through the cell. Most of the time they're invisible. You can't see them. But they give structure, transport, properties, etc. to the cell. I want to show you some pictures of the cytoskeleton. But before I do, let's make a few notes. Um, the cytoskeleton is dynamic. Meaning it grows and shrinks. And it provides structure, shape to the cell, And it can be used for intracellular transport. Intra, inside the cell, intracellular transport. Later in ANP1, when we talk about the nervous system, we'll look at neurons that are very long, don't worry right now, this won't be on the test, but if this is a neuron, it could have an axon that's three to four feet long, going from your spinal cord down to your toes, something like that. And there's the nucleus. And so you've got this distance of three to four feet, one cell very tiny, thin axon running from your spinal cord to your toe, and you need to move material. It's made up here. Proteins are made in the cell body with the nucleus. Proteins are not made down at the other end. You make the protein, and then you've got to move it three to four feet down to the end of this axon in your toe. Well, the way that happens is really pretty cool. There are little protein fibers of the cytoskeleton that run the whole way. And there are little tiny molecular motors that grab onto it. And they sort of uh, walk down leg by leg, sort of flipping over all the way down, carrying their cargo to the end. And they're really neat uh, time-lapse uh, videos of real live cells doing this and you can see it with fluorescence. But we'll talk about that later. That's the cytoskeleton. I'm sure you've all seen pictures like what I'm going to show you. So this is a picture off of the cover of one of my favorite books by the way. So I'll put a little plug in for it. It's titled Human Physiology and Integrated Approach and it's by D. Silverthorne. And this is the seventh edition, but you could pick up a sixth or a fifth for probably a couple of bucks off of Amazon. Uh, it would be good if you like a &P. We're not using this book, unfortunately. At any rate, I'm showing this cover to you because what you see are a couple of cells that have been stained this is a, a micrograph taken under, through a microscope and a picture uh, using fluorescent microscopy. And what shows up is the nucleus. And then you have lots of different colored strands. Green strands, red strands. These are several cells together. And this is all cytoskeleton. So these yellow fibers, green fibers, they're different colors or different proteins. These are actual protein fibers running through the cell and it's showing the cytoskeleton and it gives shape to it. So I think that's pretty neat. These are the kind of fibers that the little protein motors track on 
and they run up and down inside the cell. The cytoskeleton is also what's used to move chromosomes around. So you may have seen pictures before that look something like this. So we're still talking about cytoskeleton. So I'm sure you've seen pictures like this, which we will do soon in this course when we talk about cell division during mitosis and meiosis. But what we see, don't worry about the, any of these details right now, but the DNA lines up with like little chromosomes, those little X's. Remember what I showed you with the um, histones, how they form little X's? and something like that and then you have so those are the chromosomes and then you have these little organizing bodies over here don't worry about them we'll talk about them later but the cytoskeleton forms and it's dynamic you have these fibers that grow out and they contact the chromosomes and they push the chromosomes to the middle of the cell and then there are other fibers that do this. These are special protein fibers. And it's all part of the cytoskeleton that moves the chromosomes, you know, sort of back and forth to get them lined up at the middle. So this is part of the cytoskeleton inside the cell. There are lots of examples of different cytoskeletal elements, lots of different types of pro specific protein fibers, but for right now it's just this structure of proteins inside the cell that allows movement, gives the cell shape, etc. And uh, the last one on your list is vesicle. That's pretty straightforward. We've already talked about it. So a vesicle is any little small membrane bound sphere that's a vesicle. You, lysosomes are vesicles. Uh, there are other types of vesicles as well. So that's it for this recorded lecture on um, number seven out of worksheet six and your list of eukaryotic organelles. I hope it helps. I hope you read the textbook. Don't get bogged down in too many of the details, but be able to tell me a couple of highlights of each of those organelles. And I, you should be good. So I'll see you back in class. Thanks. Bye-bye.